My name is Tony Hyman. I'm a director of Max Planck Institute in Dresden, in Germany. And I'd like to talk to you today about organization of cytoplasm. So one of the key questions in biology that we're all interested in is the following. How does complexity arise to molecular interactions? The things we're interested in, such as cells, are often five or six orders of magnitude bigger than the molecules that make up. So if you have a molecule over here on this uh, uh, scale, the cells, for instance, are 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6 uh, orders of magnitude bigger than the molecules they make up. So what are the rules by which these molecules can interact to create these very complex structures which are so much bigger than they are themselves? I've worked on this problem for most of my career in a small uh, nematode called C. elegans. And C. elegans uh, makes embryos uh, about 50 microns long, which are very reproducible cell division. There was a Nobel Prize won for the study of uh, various things in C. elegans, particular cell death in the adult. And one of the most important things about working on C. elegans is it's completely invariant. So the cell lineage of the worm, the, the way in which one cell goes all the way to the different cells of the adult is completely invariant. But also, the cell division itself is invariant. I've looked at many, many of these embryos over, this, over the years, probably too many to, to think and calculate, but each one of them looks the same as the one before. So this reproducibility allows us to study problems of organization of cells um, after, after fertilization. And what I've got in the background here is a movie um, of a C. elegans embryo shortly after fertilization. And what you can see is the cytoplasm of the embryo um, with its two uh, pronuclei, one here and the other one over here. And these are the, uh, the haploid genomes of the mother and the father, which are now in one egg. And I'm going to show you a movie of these two pronuclei coming together. And when they come together, they then form the mitotic spindle and they divide. And this is using a technique known as the masking microscopy, which is a wide field, bright field microscopy technique. So what you can see now is the two pronuclei coming together in a process known as pronuclear migration. And boom, they've hit each other. And now they're going to make a mitotic spindle, which you can see in the middle here. And they undergo anaphase. The cell divides into two. Note how one cell is smaller than the other cell. And now you're going to see the second cell divisions. Notice how the divisions are now uh, asynchronous and cells are also of different sizes. And now you have a four cell embryo. Have a look at the timing down here, um, which is about 30 minutes in this timer on the bottom right. So about 30 minutes after fertilization, that means the cells have undergone this very, very complex set of uh, arrangements. And they build very, very complex structures necessary for the correct cell division. And if you look at C. elegans embryos, not only is it interesting to study the cell division itself, but a, an added nice feature of it is the cell division itself is asymmetric. Now, what I mean by asymmetric is that the fate of the two cells is different. So this one cell divides into two cells, which I've illustrated here. The green cell is the germline, and the red cell is the soma. And those two different cells go on to give cells of very different fates. So that means you can study, in this 30-minute time period, the division of the cell, the basic cell division processes necessary to divide a cell, which are likely to be common to all cells that are trying to divide. And in addition, you can ask, how is it this cell division can be asymmetric? Now, when you look at uh, a division like this, one very important thing to realize, of course, is that the fertilized egg comes from the fertilization of the oocyte and the sperm. And the majority of the cytoplasm comes from the oocyte, and it's a gift from the mother. And the, and the sperm comes in, provides some components, but it mainly triggers the fertilization process and adds some of the DNA. And so the cytoplasm is a gift from the mother and in the C. elegans embryos, um, the oocyte is relatively undifferentiated. That, that's not true for oocytes in all, all organisms, but in our particular nematode, the oocyte itself is relatively undifferentiated. It's a cytoplasm is a gift from the mother. It's like a bag of cytoplasmic components. And then that gets fertilized, and about half an hour afterwards, 
you organize this rather undifferentiated bag of cytoplasm into this complex choreographed set of events necessary for cell division.